Welcome, I am your host, Dinah Davis, and it's an honor to be here among you. Today's tech leaders, innovators, and tech extraordinaires, thank you for joining us at the Secure and Protect stage today. I hope you're as excited as I am for what we have in store. We're gonna take a deep dive into the ever-evolving world of cybersecurity and how we can keep our businesses secured and protected. Our first industry expert has some insider secrets into how hackers are getting in and why. Please welcome CEO of Sciology Labs and the author of the number one Amazon bestseller book, Insider Secrets to Internet Safety, my friend, Terry Cutler. Terry Cutler is an international award-winning cybersecurity expert and ethical hacker. Known for his catchy online videos, numerous television appearances, live public speaking events, extensive coaching products and top-level consulting services. Over the past 20 years, he's advised some of Canada's largest companies on how to prevent and remedy internal and external security penetration. For the general public, he developed an effective online learning program called Internet Safety University. With over 39,000 students from over 150 countries, he's helped educate his pupils on cybercrime, buying, security failures, internet scams, and the real social networking dangers that families and individuals face every day. Terry was named IFSEC Global's top 20 most influential people in cybersecurity for 2018, 2019, and again in 2020 and was also awarded 2017 Cybersecurity Educator of the Year Award. He was also named to the Chief Information Security Officer Platform Top 100 Influencers. Please welcome to the stage, Terry Cutler. How are y'all doing today? Good. Good. I got to tell you, I'm both challenged and excited. I'm excited because I get to get back about a topic I'm really fondly passionate about, but I'm challenged because this talk usually lasts 45 minutes to three and a half hours, and you gotta crunch this down to 20 minutes and, and deliver the keynote. Oh my God. So in this presentation, um, my bold promise to you is that you're gonna know how the hackers are getting in um, and help uh, protect yourself from a cyber attack, and maybe for some of you, a second cyber attack. So one of the biggest misconceptions, and maybe I'll take a little quick poll here, I can't really see. How many of you guys are small business owners? Okay, how many of you guys are in IT for a, for a company? Uh, perfect, there you are. All right, so one of the biggest challenges we're seeing in, with small businesses is that they feel they're too small to get hacked, right? Because they don't have the time, money, resources to deal with cybersecurity. So I'm, I'm gonna be touching on this a lot. And you're gonna see that there's two types of companies. The ones that know they've been hacked, and the ones that don't know it yet. So here's how the, uh, the agenda is going to flow. I'll talk about the top 12 issues or ways that hackers are getting in. It used to be a top 10 for me. Now there's been so much new ways, I had to upgrade it to a top 12. Then we'll talk about why they're getting in. Then I'll talk to you about, after I've overwhelmed you, we'll talk about how you guys can get started. And of course, my favorite part of the show, which is the Q&A, and hopefully we have time for that. So throughout this presentation, we're going to learn three core secrets. We're going to talk about how a whopping 78% of small businesses are actually targeted by cyber criminals because they know they don't have the time, money, or resources to deal with cybersecurity, right? You, you won't believe how many times I hear, well, my company deal, my, we make fiberglass, who's going to want to hack me? But as long as you have sensitive information, you're a target, okay? Then we're going to talk about how 60% of small businesses are going to fold within six months of a cyber attack. We see it all the time. A company gets hit with ransomware, they had to dish out almost a million dollars, and next, you know, there's layoffs happening where the company folds, okay? And I'll share throughout this presentation about what the, what the best cybersecurity experts know that you might not, okay? So let's quickly go through the top 12 issues that we're seeing right now. The first one, obviously, is phishing, right? Hackers are getting lazier and lazier, so why would they want to hack your firewall and get detected when all they have to do is send a crafted-looking email to one of your employees, have them click on a link that they're not supposed to, and then have their machines taken over, and now they become an insider to your network? Well, Terry, I have two-factor authentication, and I don't care about this. But now there's so many ways to bypass two-step verification. In fact, there's 13 ways. And the biggest one that's happening right now, there's a trend where the hackers are becoming a man in the middle. So you click on a link you're not supposed to, which links to your real 
Gmail or whatever, Office 365, the moment you sign in, it sends a token to the hacker, and now he can log in as you with one click, okay, and bypasses two-step verification. Obviously, the next one is ransomware. This is the deadliest form of online extortion. So once you get hacked with this, um, if your backups aren't protected, you're gonna, be, you're gonna get hit. So it's either, it's gonna come down to either uh, try to restore your data or pay the ransom, right? And if you don't wanna pay the ransom and you don't have your backup, you might lose the business. But then we're seeing more and more of this new threat called a wiper virus. This is where it's the same concept as, as a ransomware, except the biggest difference is it's wiping out your data. It's not doing a backup of it. It's not, co it's not copying it out to the hackers or, or holding it hostage. It actually blanks out the hard drive. Right? We're starting to see that in, in the Ukraine with the, with, the, with the Russian hacks. Next one is cloud storage. This is where employees are loading up Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, and synchronizing corporate data out to, to the cloud so they can work from home or possibly share it with other people. Um, we have affected websites that are happening. So your website, if it hasn't been tested, might be injected with, with malicious code, which means every visitor that's going to come and see you will get an infection. Okay? And then the next, if they, if they get infected, they might come after you for a lawsuit. Um, then we have compromised, lost, and stolen devices. Bring your own device, or as I like to say, bring your own disaster. How many times have we heard stories where people copied sensitive information and forgot the damn laptop in the car in a taxi, right? We see so much of that. Um, failed understanding of information security. This is where users are not being trained to, um, to understand the value of a cyber attack once it happens. How do, you, how do you manage this data? How do you protect it? We need to get more awareness training in there. The next one is around poor response. This is the biggest one. This is where once a hacker has bypassed your traditional security, there's not enough systems in place in your business to know there's a hacker in there. Because the average days to detect one is 206, 286 days. And once a hacker has been detected, you have to have a proper response plan to get him out. And that's not happening right now. That's the biggest problem. Um, and of course, we have employees, right, where these guys are, are possibly being bought out uh, for industrial espionage, plugging in a USB key with malicious uh, files, and infects your computer. We still see a lot of outdated software. I still come across Windows XP. So when I work in healthcare, um, we have systems that rely on the door security, for example. And that, and that software that controls the door security doesn't run on anything newer than Windows XP. So now they're stuck with this old, outdated software. Then, we, of course, we got stolen passwords. This is where a, a lot of people are using the same password online. So let's say you register your, your corporate email with, say, a real estate company. And next year, that real estate company gets hacked, and they're able to crack your password. Now they're going to try and log into all of your accounts that you have and, um, and, and compromise it which can also cause an email business compromise if it's your, your corporate email. Now, one of the biggest attacks that are happening right now is an attack called pass the hash. Now, just to, just to clarify, okay, I'm not talking about the good old college days here. Okay? I can see some of you guys take a trip down memory lane. Okay. This is actually an attack where I can take your password. Maybe it's encrypted. It's a strong password. I can't break. I can take this information, log in as you without ever knowing your password. And this is an attack that happened at the Canada Revenue Agency a couple of years ago. Remember, 100,000 accounts got locked out? It's because of that type of attack. Um, then, of course, we have traditional IT companies claiming they got it covered. So IT companies would be considered your family doctor, right? Would you ever ask your family doctor to perform laser eye surgery on you? Right? Most people would say no. So that's where a cybersecurity expert will come in and compliment them. Cybersecurity experts are not there to replace IT guys. We work hand in hand. And of course, with, with this, companies have a hard time qualifying for cyber insurance because they don't have all the proper techniques in place to, to stop a data breach. So let me quickly bore you with some stats, but they're important. So obviously, 95% of all companies are being targeted with malicious attacks. The average time to um, repair a cyber attack is over two months. It really is. And the average cost is about $6 million. I didn't believe this number at first. So I'll tell you a real fast story. Did a penetration test on a company, delivered the report, and a couple of days later, I get a call from the CEO saying, uh, are you in my inbox? I'm like, uh, no. He's like, oh, crap, we're being hacked. Little did we know is that the hacker had access to my report and was able to see all the other vulnerable systems and was able to hop around and start destroying machines. 
So, uh, so we saw that bill raise from, let's say, a $10,000 test to a $1.2 million bill within, within a month. So let's quickly talk about why the hackers are getting in. And this is the biggest problem right now is because most companies protect their networks like they protect their home. Now, if you, th if you think about how you protect your home, how do you protect your home? Call it out. So we got door locks. We got, we got alarm systems. What else we got? Cameras. 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 What else we got? Dogs. Dogs. If you're an American, you got a gun. <laughs> we have insurance, we got a fence, we have all these things, right? Now, uh, the alarm system guy says, yeah, yeah, if you buy this alarm system, you're going to be protected. But believe it or not, this is not what protects your home. But there is something that protects your home, which is like a system, it's a process, a timed process, where um, if one thing gets triggered, an alarm goes off, somebody gets stopped, okay? Now... This is, this is how we've broken it down. We've broken it down to a protection, a detection, and a response level. There's a little poll. All three of these columns are extremely important. They all have to work together. One of them is the most important. Show of hands if it's column one, protection. Show of hands, column two, detection. And let's say last one, response. So if you said column one, protection, you were wrong. It's actually the detection column. Because in your, your traditional security, your, your traditional protection, this is your antivirus. This is your firewall, right? A lot of times it says, well, I have an antivirus. I have a firewall. I'm protected. I don't need anything more than that. I don't need EDR, endpoint detection and response technology. This is too expensive. I don't need that. So once they've bypassed this firewall and, 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 and encryption and stuff like this, this is how they've compromised you. So you need a proper response plan to get these hackers out once they've been detected, OK? So the stats are actually showing that nearly every company has malware in it that they did not put there. And we have over 250,000 zombies that are created daily. A zombie is basically where you were just browsing the internet and you click on something you weren't supposed to, your computer gets infected without your knowledge, but that's now controlled by a bot master, which means that he's going to take control of your computer without your knowledge and may maybe make it uh, part of a cyber crime. It's going to say, okay, you millions of zombies, go attack Amazon, and it shuts it down. So, a lot of times people get overwhelmed. Okay, Terry, how do we get started, you know? How many of you guys here have ever had a, th a threat assessment or uh, like a, uh, some type of cybersecurity audit? Okay, well, let's, let's show hands. When was your last one? Let's say, how many of you guys have had an audit over a year ago? Okay, a good number of you. And how many of you guys are recent? Okay, good. All right, so here's some of the things I'm finding out when we do incident response. There's a couple of things. You need to be, pre you need to be prepared... Um, for, for, for a cyber attack, right? Because we know it's not a question of if, but when. Now what they're saying is, how fast can you get your business back up and running? So once it, um, you got to make sure your backups are protected at all costs. Make sure you do the three, two, one rule. Three copies of your backup, two of them have to be uh, synchronized, and one of them has to be off-site, okay? So here's the problem we're seeing right now, is that when an incident happens, the IT guys don't have a clue where all of the licenses are. Where's all the installation CDs? Where's the, 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 the keys to, to register the licenses? They're all over the place because there's so much turnover that, um, that the, the inventory is not there. So make sure you do a proper inventory. The other one is understanding third-party risks. So let's take a perfect example of our friends over at Sunwing. Right? We heard what happened recently with the, with the ticketing system getting, getting shut down. That's because a third party got hacked, but it affected their brand. So it wasn't Sunwing's fault, it was the other guys. So you need to know who has access to your systems at all times. Um, we have an issue also with, um, sometimes with the IT guys. You get breached, but if you're dealing with cyber insurance, they need to know how this attack happened. They want to find patient zero. But the IT guys are there like, like really revving. I, I bet I can get this thing back up in 10 minutes. Why are we taking a week? but it's because they need to collect the evidence for the, for the cyber insurance company to be able to uncover how it all happened so they can help prevent it from happening again. Um, and the last one is uh, make sure you test, test, test. Test your backups and restores. That's, if that's the biggest takeaway you take from here, it's test your backups. How many of you guys here have an outsourced cybersecurity firm or an IT company that's taking care of your stuff? Okay. So one of the questions I get asked is, well, how do I know if they're doing it right? Then I ask them the question, well, how many, are they providing you reports? Are they providing you, like, audit reports to see your risk score? They're like, no, what does it look like? So let me show you quickly what some of these reports would look like. 
So you might get a report that looks like this. Okay, here's at a glance all the computers in your company. Here's where there's a problem. Well, and here's your, here's your possible risk score. Well, Terry, I think you're full of it. How'd you get a, a score of 100? Well, we found compromised passwords on the dark web, like, like we just spoke about. Um, we, have, we have external critical vulnerabilities that have been detected. Account lockout has been disabled. This means that if I have access to a password of yours, and I start brute forcing your system, your account will never lock because that function's turned off. Not many people knew about that. So they can, they can attack your account a million times and no alarms will ever go off. Uh, make sure your, your policies are synchronized everywhere. Make sure you get uh, like a management plan to say, okay, where do, we, where do we start? So if you guys are not receiving reports like this, you need to find out why, okay? So now what's happening is, because there's so much complexity in this industry right now, we're moving very rapidly towards a zero trust model. It's where we don't trust anything. Everything's gonna be monitored, everything's gonna be audited, and you, know, you, you won't have access to, to certain things anymore. Everything has to be controlled because there's just way too many ways that a data breach, the data breach can happen. Um, what we're also seeing is that um, a lot of folks are outsourcing this stuff because it's just too expensive to do this in-house. For you to build your own security operations center, hire a couple of cybersecurity guys that are going to watch your system 24-7, you know, you're, you're talking millions of dollars. So it's actually cheaper to outsource it to a company that'll do this for you, okay? And right now, because there's so many threat vectors that are happening, they need to monitor your, your network, your endpoint, and your cloud at the same time. For example, let's say I'm logging in from Toronto, and now all of a sudden my account's logging in from Nigeria. That's not normal. That's impossible travel. That's where your system should be able to kick in and lock you out or, 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 uh, or stop the account from, from use. So that's all the time I have for you today. I want to thank you so much for, for attending, but I want to give you a quick um, additional resources you can have since I have about a minute and a half left. If any of you guys are interested in knowing if your company's information is leaked onto the dark web, you can head over to www.cybersecuritymadeeasy.com, fill in the form, and my team will receive a request that, um, that you've asked for this information, and we'll be able to run this for you. Also, because this presentation was so short, <laughs> and it was like a fire hose thing, if you want to continue this, uh, this conversation after the event, um, I actually have released our own app called Fraudster. So this whole purpose of this app is to educate both the general public and business owners and cybersecurity folks on the latest practices on how to avoid a cyber attack. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much.